So for this problem, I'm given a constant vector field V of x, y, and z, and a parametrized surface M given by R of u and v. And the first part of this question asked me to sketch that surface M. So I've got u cosine of v, u sine of v, and zero. So I know whatever I'm looking at, it's just sitting in the x, y plane. Z is constant and always zero. And u cosine v and u sine v probably look familiar, and they would look more familiar if I thought of u as r and v as theta. So I'm looking at a circle of radius u in the xy plane, and I'm given that u goes between 0 and 2, so I've got a circle of radius 2. Since v goes from 0 to 2 pi, I've got a full circle. So I'm just going to draw that in. And I want to draw some vectors n in the almost orientation. So I'm going to say default orientation is up. So all of these vectors just point up. Okay. The second part of the question asked me to calculate the rate in meters cubed per second at which fluid thro bleh, flows through m, i.e. find the flux of this vector field v through the almost oriented surface m. So to do that, I want to do a flux integral, and I'm going to use kind of the following formula. So I've got a double integral with respect to u and v. And it's got two components. The vector field evaluated at the surface, so v of r. And I take the dot product of this vector with r sub u cross r sub v. So the two partial derivatives of the parametrization of the surface. And both of these are things that I need to find. Well, v of r is going to be the easiest, since here I'm working with a constant vector field. So no matter where I am, no matter what I plug in for x, y, or z, v is still going to be the same constant, 1, 1, 1. And now I need to find r u cross r v. So first I need to find those partial derivatives. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start with r u. So just differentiate each term in r with respect to u. So u cosine of v becomes cosine of v. Likewise, u sine of v becomes sine of v. And the third component, 0, just stays 0. Now let's find rv. Well, the derivative of u cosine v with respect to v is going to be negative u sine of v. And u sine of v becomes u cosine of v. And again, the third component stays 0. And now I want to find these cross products. So I'm going to use a 3 by 3 matrix and cofactor expansions. So the first row in this matrix is going to be the vector components i, j, and k. The second row is going to be r sub u. And the third is going to be r sub v. So I'm going to go and copy those over. All right. And now let's find the components of our cross product. So I'm going to cut the top column, and I'm going to cut the leftmost row. So I'm looking at a 2 by 2 matrix here, and I want to find its determinant to find the i component. So I've got sine v times 0 minus u cosine v times 0. So the i component for this vector is just going to be 0. 
Now let's look at J. So again, cut the top column and now cut the middle row. I've got cosine V times zero plus U sine V times zero. So the J component zero as well. Now for K, cut the top column, cut the rightmost row, and I've got a two by two matrix right here that I want to take the determinant of. So I've got U cosine squared V on the main diagonal plus U sine V squared. So use my trig identity and I'm just going to get U. And now, I want to dot this with V of R. So dot product, remember, is just the product of the I components plus the product of the J components plus the product of the K components. So I've got two zeros plus one times U, which is just U. And now I'm ready to integrate that. And my bounds of integration just match the boundaries for u and v that I was given in the problem. So I'm going to integrate with respect to u first, and then v. So the integral of u is going to be 1 half u squared. And when I plug in 2, I'm going to get 2, right? 1 half times 4. Then when I plug in 0, I just get 0. So now I just want to integrate 2 with respect to v. That's going to give me 2v. Evaluated from v equals 0 to v equals 2 pi. So plug in 2 pi and I get 4 pi. Plug in 0 and I just get 0. So my answer is going to be 4 pi. meters per second as given in the problem. So the fluid flowing through our surface M is flowing through at a rate of four pi meters cubed per second.